Morning felters, hello and welcome. I have just left, I am just at the start of my journey to the North York Moors, which I'm really excited about. I am going to meet Katie and Linda from Needlebugs and you are coming along on that journey with me. Let's go. So this is Katie and Linda. They have been friends for well over 40 years. They met with their mutual love of horses and they live in the North York Moors. Linda lives on the farm and they've got lots of animals between them and their creations are stunning. This is on their Facebook. They still get up to lots of fun together. This is sledging this winter and this is the studio they work from which was just finished off this spring and it's a fantastic place for all their creations um, a beautiful handcrafted wooden table in the middle where all the felting happens all the cupboards were hand burnt by linda so lots of effort went into preparing this space and this is where we're going to do the interview and let me just show you some of their work in case you're not familiar with it they are very well known for doing their animal heads but they also do lots of birds, lots of rabbits and hares. Look at that kestrel, absolutely gorgeous. And this is a little curl you, curl I can never say it very well. Um, another lamb head, they do valet heads as well. And some more rabbit's hairs. The birds they do are fantastic, the kingfisher. And my favourites are the little owl. And just to show you something different, look at this bison. So let's meet them. So hello felters and welcome to Needlebugs and this is Katie Hi. and Linda Hi. and I just want to say thank you so much to them for letting me come here and talk to you. Hi. How did it all start? Who was the first one to start felting? You were interested in it because my husband bought me a needle felted hair. And, and so uh, you had needle felted hair and you saw it. I really wanted one that I could, couldn't justify paying for one because it was quite expensive, wasn't it? So I've always liked sewing and knitting, crocheting. She's quite crafty, though. Yeah, so I uh, said I'd have a go, didn't I? Well, he wanted to get on a course and I said, oh, go on, I'll, I'll go on it with you. Which it's not, I've never done anything like this before, just woodwork, really. Oh, lovely. But then we couldn't get on a course because we weren't experienced enough. <laughs> So, oh no! Yeah. <laughs> so she won't let look what happened. Go. So we just decided to have a go on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. and that was just it. Have a go, yeah. So who did you sort of watch on YouTube? It was mainly Sarah Thena, wasn't it? Yeah. She's got great long videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and you pause it, it go back. Yeah. Over and yeah. over, and just kept just kept at it. We both yeah. got hooked really quickly. Yeah. Started felting twenty eighteen. It was about February, February. 2000 and so three and a bit years ago. Yeah. Now, Katie and Linda have put this on their Facebook page. I think they did it about six months ago. And it's just to compare the difference between how they were in 2018 and how they've advanced into 2020. And it's really good for everybody to do this, really. But it does show you can improve really quite quickly with needle felting if you practice, practice, practice. I mean, look at the difference. Absolutely stunning. And they really have been working at it. But if you consider it's only two to two and a half, three years, I mean, it's lovely. And I think it's important to look back because we doubt ourselves all the time, don't we? Yeah, on and off. I mean, yeah. sometimes we get a bit of confidence, but then other times, oh, God, yeah, we can't do it. Can't yeah. back. When we did that video, we had a, we were really like, oh my God, yeah, we've really come on. And, and I think having the two of you, you've been friends for many years. Yeah. But it is, it's just having somebody there to motivate us, isn't it? And also, if you get stuck on something, we'll, you know, Linda will, yeah, well, I always be... struggle with eye sockets and Linda's really good at them. So oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, so Linda yeah. will give me a little. I'd like help. I'm always going over going, what do I do again? And 
Oh, she'll come to and me and say, way, how yeah. you, yeah, you know, how have you got that texture on that? So you've really learned yeah. off each other. Yeah. So yeah. most of your learning has been self-taught. Yeah. Well, yeah, what yeah. 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 what's your yeah. expert? Do you remember your very first felt? Like your yeah. very first thing that you made, what was it? Yeah. I made, <laughs> I've got, I think it was from Lincolnshire. Ben Crafts, yeah. yeah, the little hair. <laughs> And we're very lucky because Linda managed to find him out the back. I think he's a fantastic first felt. Are there um, any felts that you haven't been able to sell that you're going to keep forever? So who made this? Then? I made you it. made this. <laughs> and it's really badly made. Oh. You can see how this fleece is just threadbare, really, and he's got really bad eyes. It's got it looks very... like he's been on. And he's not, as we were saying <laughs> earlier, he's not bad. No, you it's know, not the worst. He's a good shape. Yeah. It's just maybe the expression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a bit well, unusual. We won't sell him. So you're going to keep him. He's our little mascot. A little reminder. How do you get inspired to... I know, it's just the countryside. So this is the view from the workshop and in the fields. Really beautiful. Around you, isn't it? We're mm. so lucky. I mean, we've got woodpeckers constantly oh, coming, lovely. feeding the babies. Yeah. All day long, we've got mistle thrush, uh, hare, deer. So a rabbit on the way up. Yeah. Else. But we see deer nearly every day, don't we? Yeah, we do. Um, we've got owls around. And... Oh, yes. The was it? Is it a tawny owl, the little one that you did? As, yeah, and I saw and it. You down. took a picture of it on the pole? Yeah. yeah. That's the owl that Katie saw on the way to work and she took a picture of, and that's the recreation. How amazing. Wish I could recreate like that. All the driftwood, they uh, go to the beaches and try and source it from the beaches. Like if I'm making a stag view, so I've got my computer on Pinterest and <clears> looking <throat> at all the different angles. I was, so. yeah, going to ask, how do you, it's, you know, getting the proportions correct and things like that. Don't do any measuring. No, <laughs> we don't like measuring. No. Yeah. I mean, Linda, is, you know, we, it's just a standard joke between us that she doesn't like making anything small. So she'll say something <laughs> like, I'm going to do a small sheep head. And then I go to work and come home and she's made some... Yeah, she's made like this one. Yeah, you know, she just doesn't like doing small things. Have you had any needle felting injuries that... Because I had repetitive strain with my... I have got to board my shoulder. When I'm at work, mm -hmm. if I have two or three days off, it eases it a lot. So you do have to be very conscious, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, I've just started going shoulders and a bit of massage therapy. Yeah, and, and then obviously... I mean, you're three, three and a half years in, do you still stab yourself every now and again? I do, Katie. <laughs> I very, very rarely stab myself. But you do? Linda's every day. Every day. <laughs> Sometimes six times if I'm making and an she'll eye. she'll go right through her hand and stuff like that. I exactly the other side and then I just pull it out. Oh, she's really hard. It wears our needle phobic and oh. Oh, God. yes. I read about it. <laughs> I remember she went, look, Kate, and she got two broken needles stuck out of her oh. hand. It's a dangerous, <laughs> dangerous thing. So I did want to ask, obviously you guys were on TV with the wonderful world of crafting. Um, how did you find that? I was at work and I saw um, an ad Facebook. on Facebook saying, are you a crafter, are you wanting to set up a business? I honestly didn't think we'd hear anything back from them. So yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just... They asked me loads of questions and then they said they were going to phone Katie. Uh, and if that went well, then they would um, FaceTime us. And then we went into blind panic, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So, I mean, it was fantastic for myself to watch. I mean, we absolutely really? loved it. Oh, we just cringed the whole way through. Did you? Yeah. I mean, I, 
Yeah, I don't even like looking in the mirror, let alone looking oh, at I know. on television. But it was fantastic from our point of view, you know, looking in it and seeing other felt and having felters on there because obviously yeah. there's not that, it's it's getting bigger. Yeah. But, you know, a couple of years ago, I don't think it was that well heard of at all. We were a bit worried though as well because we were still fairly new to it and there's some um, really incredible felters out there and we we felt a bit awkward about it yeah, know, we like, did, yeah. we were worried like, we're not that good and well, yeah you doubted you yourself yeah us, oh, look how good we're doing it. and you did say you got overrun with inquiries afterwards yeah uh, right. after the tv yeah yeah over well over two and a half thousand emails it's absolutely incredible and it's almost too much it was Definitely yeah. too much. We both. We went through a phase of regretting doing it, didn't we? Because we were just so stressed with it all, and neither is a great with technology, and we should have set up standard replies to emails and and you know and on Facebook messages, but we didn't know how to do it. And mm. we just oh, and we didn't want to let people down. You know, no. we didn't want to ignore people. So no, it was like, you oh, had to reply. You felt so yeah. Str- it makes me feel stressed. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, it makes me feel my stomach churn. And they were asking us for prices, and Katie was saying, well, "I've got to, I've got to give them prices." But and so we sort of made up these stupid prices. And yeah, then, and then realised we were. Far too cheap on some items, you know. It might and take you two yeah. to make you charge you yeah. like a tenner and not work on that. But you know, it because we just hadn't. We were still learning about pricing, and we mm. still are, you know. And oh, it was just awful. We got ourselves in the right pickle doing that. Yeah. Do you think you have more of a structure on pricing now? Definitely. Do you look at your hours? Yeah. Do you try and monitor your hours over? Because a lot of the time we don't monitor our hours, yeah. and think, then we... yeah, I think we know roughly how long a certain size head would make. Yeah, you know, like the sheep heads. Yeah, we, we we know how how long they take us and stuff. And some things, you know, we we sort of manage to get a you know a basic minimum wage allowance at hourly rate. And some things you don't. I've especially got a good idea of how long it takes me now because I've been doing it day yeah. in day mm. for the last two years now. And um, and then you've got to take into consideration what fleece you're using. Yeah. You know, the sheep shearing, washing, processing. Um, we're going to go into that in a bit, definitely, yeah. with um, you've got sheep yeah. <laughs> so and you're do. shearing them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're doing everything. And that's hours and hours of work. Absolutely. And all the yeah. looking after the animals yeah. as well. Yeah. And, uh, Just watching Alinda do these um, antlers and the amount of layers and layers that she's putting on, it just shows you how much work and time and effort goes into these creations. And what sort of framework do you use? Do you just do the wire and then wrap the wire straight away? Do you put anything on the wire to stop the wool slipping? Pipe cleaners. cleaners. Pipe cleaners, yeah. yeah, they work so well. Yeah, yeah. unless it's something yeah. really small like uh, mm. bird's feet, then we'll use a tiny bit of glue and then wrap straight onto the wire. What yeah. are your favourite needles? What do you use the majority of the time? I use 38 mostly. And what about <clears throat> you, Katie? I probably use mainly 38s and 40s. Spiral if I can get them. Yeah, and definitely forty two. And needle holders. I see an awful lot of these three needle holders. If you don't yeah. mind me, just a video yeah, through yeah, here. Yeah. There's an awful lot of them. So those yeah. are sort of your favourite. I've yeah. got arthritis in my hands, and I, I've really struggled to hold a needle. Um, you know, one. Okay, so that works much much better so for what's you. Your sort of main wools that you use. Do you use a core wool? Yeah, we use car and Corridale wool. And where do you get that from? Mainly from World of Wool. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you use a huge variety of other wools, don't you? Obviously, you use your own wools, but you were saying you quite like, is it uh, Ryland or? Yeah, Ryland. Love Ryland. Yeah, and um, it's got sort of, it's quite multi toned, isn't it, yeah, with Ryland? Yeah, and you can get it in such a good sort of variety of colours. 
So you've been using um, that an awful lot for texture lately, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you get a lot of wool from Zoe Robson at Fleece for You. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. She's her. amazing. Is she, she on Facebook? She's on Facebook, yeah. yeah. Um, and what sort of wools do you get sort of fleeces, fleeces but she also yeah. does her own sort of blends of carded wools and she's just got such a wealth of knowledge on different breeds of sheep that she's really good at finding you what you need excellent she's just really helpful and she would buy so much from her and after chatting for a while i got to go out and meet the sheep and they came running over these are just four of them. They've got some more sheep coming in time. That one there is a pure breed valet in the back. This one is a crossbreed valet. You can see the resemblance. This one here is a grey faced Dartmoor and he was so cute and that's a little Gotland. And so they've sheared them all and they're going to be using all their wool. But look at them. They're lovely. They're so friendly um, and I'm very jealous. I would love to have sheep. This grey faced Dartmoor, he was really, really sweet. <laughs> he, was a, he looks like a real character. And so they do some of the washing in the studio, but they've also got a utility out the back. This is just a first soak of one, one of the fleeces. Um, Linda likes to use um, a fabric conditioner as well to try and stop uh, any tangles forming. So that was lovely to see. And then these cupboards that I pointed out at the beginning, this is where all the wool is stored. And I couldn't believe how much wool they had, but they make a lot of makes. Look at it, all absolutely full up. So, and then they dry it up the top. So a really good little drying rack. This is what we've been hearing, sorry, in the background. <laughs> so that turkey there was Major Tom, and he has, I think, at least three females on the farm. And they have some turkey babies, turkey chicks. So I think they're at least three, four weeks old, but they were very, very sweet. It was lovely to see. And Major Tom treated me to a little special dance. I think the dogs were a bit amused by it. I have to say they've got four dogs, two are Katie's, two are Linda's. And they were so well behaved, but they do get two lovely walks a day on the farm. Um, but they were beautiful and they sat there throughout the whole interview and they were so friendly. Um, but a lovely group of dogs all get on really, really well. But for a beginner, what sort of what what would you be your main recommendation? Do you think they should have a starter kit? Do you think they should pick something that, like if it was a sheep or a hedgehog, something that they wanted to make? I think I think the, for me the most important thing is to have the right type of wool yeah um and the right needles and i think you can get there's loads of information for example like on your yeah. youtube sites yeah. or on facebook felting sites really do a little bit of research before you get started before when you... we started we used the roving yeah marina <laughs> marina, marina roving, roving tops and, and it oh really hard work. yeah know, it, it did nearly put us off a bit at times um, and then once you've got the right wool, I would just go on to YouTube and, yeah. and, and play with your wool, play with your needles, mm -hmm. um, find out what works best for you. Yeah. So, ladies, I just want to say thank you so much for letting me come up and be annoying for several hours and have <laughs> a... It's been really lovely to meet you. Oh, it's been so really good. Enjoyed yeah, it. I've, really enjoyed I've loved it. it. And um, I've got these two little things for you because... Aww. You are definitely needle felting addicts. They are little oh, pin yeah. badges. Oh, thank you. oh that's great. Um, oh, that. So I've got my one on here. Yeah. So they're little pin badges, oh, and yeah. you are definitely qualified as needle felting <laughs> addicts, I think. Okay. So, <laughs> so thank you so much, and I've really enjoyed it. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome back as well anytime. Thank you. Don't say that. I'll be back. <laughs> and this is my journey back. So back down off the North York Moors, I was treated to some absolutely stunning views. It's a huge expanse as you drop down, so really worth going to have a look. North York Moors, really recommend them. There we go, Felters. So I'm nearly home. I had a fantastic time. Katie and Linda were so friendly and I cannot thank them enough for letting me go in and have a look round. I really, really enjoyed it as a felter, as a business person, as a YouTuber, just had a whale of the time and they've invited me back and I would love to go back and see them again and I hope to see them at Cannon Hall 5 on the farm when they're there. 
So thank you so much, Needlebugs. And I hope you've all enjoyed that and, and learned something from it. And um, I'm hoping to interview some more people over the next few months. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon, everybody. Take care.